Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of IMED. We spoke about osteoporosis and the kind of effects it has on the Sri Lankan lifestyles. And we do have with us today Dr. Taranga Samrasekara to talk more about how we can actually treat osteoporosis and whether it is controllable or curable. So we'll get his expert ideas about how to first treat osteoporosis. Good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening, sir. Uh, if we may start with uh, how do you actually treat osteoporosis? Uh, so there are several methods of treating osteoporosis. First, uh, we would try to identify any underlying risk factors and if they, they are correctable, we try to correct. Let's say patient is on some certain medication that is causing osteoporosis, then we try and stop them. Then the, if the patient is lacking nutrition, we try to correct it with proper nutrition advices. Then we do the blood checks and see whether the patient is vitamin D deficient. Deficient, we are going to supplement with vitamin D and calcium as well. Those, those are the basic things that we are going to do. Then we have the specialist medications directed to uh, correct the uh, osteoporosis. So uh, there are several types available and fortunately we have them in Sri Lanka as well. The first group is called bisphosphonates. Uh, to explain how these drugs act, the bone has two kinds of cells. There are osteoblasts which lays down new bone and there are osteoclasts which eat out the old bone. So osteoporosis happens when there is removal of bone exceeds formation of new bone as we mentioned in the last episode. So uh, in simple terms osteoclasts are acting more than the osteoblasts. So what we do by giving these drugs we block the action of osteoclasts. So it will in a, in a simple terms it would buy enough time for osteoblasts to put new bones. So there are Again, there are several types of bisphosphonates available in Sri Lanka. There is an oral tablet called alandronate, which is given weekly. Then there are injectable formations as well. So we give them in a regular in intervals. For an example, there is a drug called solidronic acid that we give once a, as a once a year infusion. So it is very convenient for the patient to take as, as an annual injection, just like their vaccination. So, Doctor, uh, looking at the treatments, and you mentioned that it is available in Sri Lanka in simple layman language, if I may ask, is there a way of uh, treatment where osteoblasts are created uh, at a rapid pace than normal? Well, uh, there are certain drugs. Unfortunately, we don't have them in Sri Lanka yet. But they are maybe available in, in uh, other countries, but during the next few years, I think probably we'll get this medication. There are drugs called teriparatide and denosumab, the newer medications, uh, which are quite expensive even in other countries. But I think soon they'll be coming to Sri Lanka as well. But we have alandronate and soldonic acid free of charge in government hospitals. So it's available for everyone in Sri Lanka. So what it does is actually it controls the decaying, whereas what should probably be, as you mentioned, is probably more expensive in yes. doing is to try and bring in a situation where the bone mass keeps increasing. So, in order to do so, uh, how long would a treatment actually on an average uh, elderly person would take? Yeah. Uh, we need, because the bone is a slowly growing structure, so we need to give it for a long duration. Usual treatment course is like five years, but uh, it depends on the other risk factors as well. Let's say the patient is on steroids, then we may give it for a shorter duration. Uh, but uh, usual average you know, is the five-year treatment course. Then we usually give a holiday, that's like one year. Then we reassess whether the patient needs a further course of treatment. Then we might repeat the uh, treatment protocol again. Is there any problems uh, relating to this type of treatment, doctor? Yeah. Bisphosphonates are safe medications, but yes, there are a few uh, problems that happens with them. One is called serum sickness. I think everyone can relate to it because when we get the flu shot or the corona injection, we all got this you know, fever-like illness, which was you know, lasting for like three days uh, and body pains and fever. So same thing can happen with bisphosphonates, especially during the first injection. So it can happen. So we advise patients to take paracetamol when they are getting the injections. 
uh, because uh, sometimes they get scared with the injection they say this allergic reaction but it's quite uh, you know common it's a common to happen other than that very rarely uh, with long treatment uh, there can be increased risk of fracture which is ironic because we give it to prevent fractures but if you give it for a long time there can be fractures at the unusual sites uh, and uh, in even rarely there is a special condition called uh, uh, necrosis of the jaw so it happens in the jaw bones there are some uh, uh, damage to the jaw tissue it can happen but it's very rare so uh, as you said uh, there are there are chances that something could go wrong but as long as you stay safe then things aren't that uh, that bad but uh, you mentioned about a particular injection doctor that uh, so if the treatment is 5 years uh, it's only 5 injections yes. so is it uh, all right to continue taking it uh, thereafter uh, that kind of an injection or should they move on to oral treatment afterwards yes so uh, oral treatment and the injectable treatment the duration is the same after 5 years we need to stop because if we continue suppressing the osteoclast again because osteoclast need to act but if we do it more than necessary it can uh, work the opposite way and we can get increased risk of fractures so that's why we need to stop at 5 years which is the safer duration then observe for one year and if the treatment is indicated after that we do a dexa scan and reassess then we consider uh, giving another cause of injection if it is really necessary i was about to ask that question doctor now after a treatment of 5 long years cuz uh, that's a uh, quite a long time yes, of a yes. lifetime so how do you know or how would the patient know that the treatment is successful or not yes so after the second year of the treatment we usually do another dexa scan maybe sooner depending on the patient risk factors and see whether the treatment is successful uh, if we are going in the right direction if the patient is not improving then we reassess the patient with the see whether is there a problem with the compliance whether if it's special, especially for the oral tablet th whether the patient is taking it properly or uh, any other things that we have missed in the initial assessment and the underlying condition hormonal deficiencies nutritional deficiencies so we need to assess that if the patient is responding then we continue for 5 years then thereafter we can give another one year holiday and reassess by doing a dexa scan one thing i forgot to mention with alandronate the oral tablet it can cause gastritis so as a precaution we ask the patient to it's a weekly tablet take it on a sunday so he does he want he or she won't forget it early morning empty stomach with a glass of water and ask the patient to remain seated or standing and refrain from lying down because if they lie down the tablet can come out and cause severe gastritis so doctor now we've looked at uh, as to what the treatment is like you mentioned it's about 5 years and all of this so when we consider the repercussions of it say for instance a patient forgets to take a tablet for maybe a month long period for instance uh, he or she travels abroad and maybe forgets to take the tablet uh, what sort of impact would that kind of thing happen have with other medication like say antihypertensive medication the diabetic medication it has a significant impact if the patient forgets the pill for a one month it's a long time but with these drugs they are slow acting so i wouldn't say to panic but uh, they should be more concerned about the compliance but it's not as serious as the other medications because these drugs are slow acting ones but i'm not promoting you know uh, forgetting the pills it's important to take the pills on time and uh, regularly to get the best out of the treatment and uh, could this overlap any other medication also that the patient would be taking can osteoporosis be treated whilst you are treating some other disease in a human of course of course these drugs are quite safe medications and uh, they are uh, there are very little uh, you know drug interactions uh, there are few things that we need to consider because the patient is on calcium supplements calcium sometimes can interfere with other drugs let's say the patient is taking thyroxine which is also to be taken empty stomach but if the patient takes calcium with thyroxine they bind together and there is reduced absorption of thyroxine so there are few things that the patient needs to be aware 
but the doctor will, will usually go through the prescription and the other medication that the patient is on and advise according to case by case basis to the patient. Is there any ill effects of uh, taking this medication over a particular other medicine that may be a patient with osteoporosis should inform their doctors say I have this kind of a deficiency or this kind of disease uh, should I take this tablet or not? Is there restrictions in certain sicknesses where yes. you should not take these tablets? Yes, Ishan, very important. The, the first thing that you should tell is that you have gastritis or not because that will decide whether we are going to do the injections or the tablets. If the patient is having gastritis, so there is a condition called hiatus hernia where the stomach is not closing properly and the acid comes out to the uh, esophagus. In those kind of situations, Alantrine tablet is not preferred, so we would go for the injections and uh, it's always tell, better to tell the medication that you are already on to decide the proper timing and the best method of administration. Because uh, what we usually see is when you go to a doctor or for, um, uh, if you have some sort of sickness, uh, they'd probably ask you, are you allergic to anything? Yes. So yes. likewise, is there anything that prevents uh, patients from uh, taking the injection or the oral tablet is what I think a lot of people would want to know. So moving from that, uh, we always say prevention is better than cure. So how would you prevent yourself from getting into trouble? Yes. So for the younger, uh, the oste prevention of osteoporosis should start at a younger age because as I we mentioned in the previous episode, uh, the peak bone mass reaches at the age of 30. So if we as a young people do more exercise and eat a healthy diet and try to keep our bodies fit, then we will get the maximum uh, bone mass we can achieve. Well. And uh, towards the, you know, as we grow older, it's better uh, best to do some balance training and prevent falls because if we get falls, then we get, get the fractures. So we should shift the focus as we age to balance training and uh, we need to remember that uh, aging and the gender are the two most important risk factors for developing osteoporosis. So, uh, so we need to, to prevent, we need to do the in the younger age to do exercise, get a good muscle mass and achieve the peak bone mass by proper nutrition and for the elderly it's again important to do some balance training and have a proper nutrition, uh, but to prevent falls is also important. And doctor, at the, during the previous episode, you mentioned about elderly uh, parents looking after grandchildren and things like that, where you tend to bend over and do things and carry uh, small kids and all of that. Uh, is that advisable or what would you advise the elderly parents to follow when it comes to taking care of uh, their grandkids? Yes. When the grandkids are around, our main problem is, you know, they have toys all around lying on the floor. So we see most of the time it's a trivial thing like a toy car in, on the floor and the grand was carrying something on a, uh, like a plate, then she missed the uh, toy lying on the floor and it trips and falls and get a fracture. So uh, the environment would be, should be very safe and uh, especially if you have elderly parents, uh, there should be good lighting to the house, especially where sometimes they need to go to the washroom during the night. So there should be accessible electric switches so they can switch on and go to the washroom. And uh, if they are having poor sight or poor hearing, you should tend to that, get spectacles because if they can see properly, then they can avoid these obstacles like a wire in the floor especially we have extension wires <laughs> lying on the floor in the Sri Lankan homes. So those are the one of the common things that they uh, get trip on and uh, hearing because they can, uh, you know, anticipate some movement. Sometimes the children or the family pet dog can run, come running and they can hit and have a fall. So uh, these things should, can easily be corrected. With regard to activities, of course, uh, we should advise them to avoid lifting heavy weights because if we lift heavy weights, it can damage the vertebral bodies. And uh, they also help with housing activities like, you know, carrying water buckets, which are very heavy items. And, uh, but they can do light activities like 
let's say sweeping the floor, arranging the house, do some light gardening. Then again gardening, I would advise against carrying pots filled with soil. So uh, those are things that actually our li our, uh, families uh, go through on a daily yes. basis, I guess, because I think this is something uh, we have experienced over generations. But uh, what is the Sri Lankan situation, doctor? I'm just uh, popping out to the global context of it. Uh, where do we stand when it comes to osteoporosis in the global context? Uh, Asians and uh, white Caucasians, we have a higher risk of getting osteoporosis compared to Africans. So again, and we have a high risk of uh, getting osteoporosis because uh, we have a high, higher number of elderly persons living among us. Sri Lankan is aging population, as you know. So uh, and because of our ethnicity and because of our high, uh, old, uh, higher number of older individuals, we are getting higher number of osteoporotic fractures. And uh, that apart, apart from that, we have problems with nutrition as well. So I think these factors would uh, put us in a position where we are having higher rate of osteoporotic fractures. Apart from that, uh, the way we structure our families, we have uh, you know extended families, not the nuclear family. So, a lot of grandparents living with uh, their children and their grandchildren. So, the environment that we have a lot of staircases in our houses, and uh, our gardens are not you know leveled. Properly answered, so, cool, very true. then we have problems with that as well. Then the way we wear our footwear. Sometimes we wear rubber slippers, which can be, you know, prone to accidents. So those kind of things put us in, a, you know, higher than the normal world population of uh, having a risk of getting fractures. No. Is there anything that uh, globally or the WHO would actually uh, try and send a message out to the global mass? As you mentioned, more Asians are prone to this than the Africans or maybe the Europeans for that matter. So. Is there any focus uh, on the Asian population or, for instance, South Asian population yes. in India, Sri Lanka? Yes, countries it's like the that? awareness among the medical professionals as well as the general public. If we are aware only when we can detect this thing, then having the infrastructure, that's the DEXA scans in the major hospitals, so they can come and get the scans done. And uh, having a proper nutrition, doing the vitamin D levels, having calcium, and changing the lifestyle because a lot of younger people now having uh, have like sedentary lifestyles they we do office jobs so we don't get enough exercise so promotion of the exercise and active lifestyle is another thing that we need to promote and now uh, people spend a lot of time with this on sc with screens like the smartphones and the laptops so uh, that is also contributing for the lack of exercise so these are things who is focusing in the prevention of osteoporotic fractures. And uh, that's something important, Doctor, because I think uh, with uh, the corona pandemic that's hit all of us, not just Sri Lanka, I think a lot of us have got used to working from home and, as you mentioned, spend a long time in front of a laptop or with our mobile phones or tabs for that matter. Uh, how negatively would this impact when it comes to aging and especially now a lot of our even at the age of maybe in your, in your uh, 20s or 30s people complain of back pains and all yes. of that because we sit in one place for more than probably six to eight hours a day uh, how could this have an impact on osteoporosis at, le at a later age yes these younger people will have less bone mineral density compared to their parents so they are already genet genetically vulnerable because of the asian ethnic group and they have poor nutrition and they don't get sun exposure plus they don't do exercise so by next 30 to 50, 30 years time when they become older they can have more incidence of osteoporosis compared to their parent generation do we have statistics the doctor because uh, i think uh, what we have seen is maybe if we go back to our grandparents they were much fitter yes. and we've seen what they do and our parents the same but uh, our lifestyles have taken a turn and uh, as you mentioned, we are more prone to certain things because we have got used to desk jobs uh, yes. than what our parents and grandparents were. So, uh, next generation probably would spend more time uh, doing the same thing that we do or even more. So, do you think the osteoporosis age that you mentioned about 65 or 70 would be 
for uh, 50 or 55 by the time the next generation uh, gets there? There's a theoretical possibility, but only time would tell. But there are positive things as well. Now there are increased number of gyms available. Or I don't know whether people use it, but there are. But when you go out, you see people exercise. So that's a positive thing. If you walk in the road in the morning, you see a lot of people doing exercise. So there are positive changes as well, as well as the negative things, the positive changes as well. So only time would tell. So that's something for everyone to keep in mind, because uh, to summarize the whole thing, we've spoken for two episodes with regards to osteoporosis, that healthy lifestyles and hitting the gym, or at least doing some sort of exercise at home on a regular basis, and understanding what you should do with your uh, body with regards to uh, especially weights is something that we need to highlight on doctor isn't yes, it yes weight bearing exercises are important to increase the bone mass and increase the muscles as well so even when you get a fall the body can uh, absorb the shock from and you can also hold on to something to prevent the fall if you have a good uh, strength in your body and if you do exercise as a younger person, it's natural that you continue that good habit when you grow old as well. And what you have you know, gained during the younger days, then you can uh, spend during when you are becoming old. So before we wind off, doctor, one thing that I'd like to ask is, is osteoporosis curable or is it just controllable? Ishan, it depends on the definition of what the cure is. Let's say osteoporosis is due to some underlying cause, then yes, we can cure, because by removing the underlying cause, we can cure. But the, uh, with treatment, we can reverse all the damages that's been happening to the bone. So in stricter terms, it's a cure, but in a broader term, yes, uh, what we can do is like uh, damage control, not the total cure. So there is uh, opportunity even though as you say, you take five years treatment, maybe mm, two, yes. two, three years down the line, you are prone to the same dis, uh, same sickness again. Because There's chances of you getting Yes, getting because the biggest risk factors are the gender, age and the ethnicity, which we cannot change. That's why, but the, if you do exercise and get the nutrition and get the treatment, we can prevent the fracture. That's what matters. So bone decaying is something that happens to all of us. It's uh, not something that's only to the Asians or on, as the doctor mentioned, even though the uh, chances are higher when it comes to the Asian uh, population and uh, especially women here in Sri Lanka, it is common to everyone, like doctor said, even to the queen, because uh, that will happen. It's a way of life. And as doctor mentioned, beyond the age of 30 or 35, it's the uh, de uh, decreasing uh, trend that you get to experience. So it's about making sure that you stay healthy, do what you need to do, prevent yourself from getting into trouble and especially with regards to weight exercising. When you get old, you should try and stay away from that, but to try and do balanced exercises and have a proper diet to reduce on carbs. So those are little things that we would like to highlight and I made as a summary with regards to osteoporosis. It's uh, our duty to thank uh, Dr. Taranga Samarasekara uh, for sharing his expertise. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, Vishal. And uh, hope you all have taken something out of this and hopefully, as Doctor said, maybe it, it could be your uh, 2022's resolution to try and hit the gym more often and stay healthy. It's time for me to say goodbyes on today's edition. See you same time, same place next week as well. It's bye-bye from me.